Hey guys, welcome back to Garen Morgan Art, and today I'm going to show you how I would go about painting palish skin on a character. So I'm going to use a previous character that I've painted and drawn, and I've kind of showed the process on TikTok. First and foremost, I'd like to apologize for not having the audio for this video. I accidentally forgot to turn on my phantom power for my audio interface, so I have to just dub over this video. However, I'll be as concise as I can so that I can get you guys some interesting and helpful content for your future pieces. Okay, to give a brief explanation of how I got you, I masked my character out, I added a clipping mask and attached all the colors of my chosen color palette to this character. And then I've begun adding a gradation to the face, uh, cooler colors towards the jaw and mouth area. Then the cheeks are pinkish reddish and then the forehead lies in the yellow ochre area. However, I am pushing them towards the cooler variations as this character, I want to remain like a cool ice queen. So as you just saw here, I've added in a shadow map. So that means the, the left hand side of the face I've play, uh, placed in a singular shape uh, that combines the cheek slash cheekbone, the eye socket slash nose and like a triangle for the nose where the bridge and the cartilage would lie. And then on the opposite side of that, you have the light which is coming from the top right in this case will hit the entirety of the right side of the face apart from the planes that are on the bottom of any object so say you have a sphere you'd get a core shadow along the bottom left hand side of the sphere see i just had a little bit of bounce light to the shadow map of the left cheekbone her right cheekbone uh so i did like a desaturated mid-tone red and then i've added a little bit of blue and then i've tucked my shadow color again and painted back over it this will add like a nice vibration effect of blue coming through that cheek i also added a slightly more saturated pinkish purplish reddish color almost of the same value to the same cheek plane and then i also added a darker a much darker cast shadow on the inside of the eyebrow and where the eyebrow meets the bridge of the nose and the eye socket a quick little thing I've just done there is I have blended the line between the cheek plane and the inner cheek plane. So where the light meets the dark on the left hand side, I have blended in between there by going back and forth with a brown bristle brush and then dragging once right the way down along that one line. And then that adds for like a nice transition between these and also gives like a curvature effect. I did that with a mixer brush. So I've just added a contact shadow where the nose, muzzle of the mouth, and the cheekbone meet. This will indicate the laughing lines for the face. And you want to be really careful with this as it can make your character look old. So what I mean by that, that is if you use simultaneous contrast where the muzzle is highlighted and the contact shadow is darker, it can be really sharp and it can make them look like wrinkles. So you've got to be careful that there's a very soft transition there. However, it's got to look almost like a line so you're going to be really careful with that balance so i've added like a blush effect to the cheeks here as well i just fixed the right hand side cheek slash jaw plane so i've added a little bit of a like a gradual skin tone transition there so it's gone from the base skin tone to a shadow color and then i added a little bit of blue in there as well to make it more cool right so i'll update you on the current process so i've just added in a darker core shadow to the left hand cheek her right and this will make that really stand out as a, a atmos plane when next to the light triangle shape that I have on the inner cheek towards like the eyeball. So where it curves across, I've added like a core shadow or a terminator line where it'll transition from dark to like a lighter dark and from a dark to a light. So later on, I will add a terminator line, which usually is like a burst of color. So I'll add that line in and it'll really make that form look like it's turning in space and rounded. And it's also a nice transition of light to dark. So like you want your most saturated colors in the transition between light and dark. And that really does add a lot of life to your character. I cannot stress this enough, mind. You want to practice your primitives as much as you can. Your cubes, your spheres, your cylinders and your cones as you will know how to paint each and every one of them to look like they are in three-dimensional space. 
and every aspect of the head has some form of sphere, cone, cylinder, and cube. So if you take the chin, for instance, that's kind of like a like a pentagonic sphere. So if you notice, it's got a core shadow and a highlight side and a key highlight, like a dot highlight on the uppermost corner of the sphere. So it looks like, like round in space. This is really important for when you're doing your portrait. So for instance, if you practice your primitive shapes and then you go on to practice noses, mouths, ears, eyeballs, chins, lips, and then add it all together and practice portraiture from the old masters or just grab your own reference pictures. And then you practice this over and over again. So it looks like I've added like a load of detail to certain parts of this piece, but I haven't. It's just simple rendering of the three dimensional primitive forms. Okay, so I'm gonna catch you up a little bit here. I've added a multiply layer for the line layer. I changed the color to like a purplish color. I flattened it down towards the color layer and then I started painting on top. So then I added in my eyeshadow color, a little bit of simultaneous contrast for the bottom eyelid on the right hand side of the face, our right hand side. And then I chose like a bluish purplish color for the eyeshadow for this character because obviously I wanted to be like a, a cool ice princess, light to dark on the eyelid, the upper eyelid on both sides. So I've gone from darker to highlight in the center, then a little like a 25% away from the highlight and then a dark and then a little bit lighter but still dark. So this gives you like a nice core shadow. So if you've practiced your cylinders by this point and you've come back to the video, then you'll know that this kind of sometimes depending on the lighting there's two core shadows on the cylinder so in this case the eyeball will get darker when it rounds in towards the socket on both sides it's a little bit lighter on the right hand side in this case as it's meeting the light but the pigment of the eyeshadow would make it kind of dark anyway and then the center is where the most highlight will hit and i'll do that on both sides except one will be closer to the right than the other as it's further away from the face uh, further away from the light you'll also notice i just did a liquify layer that was to try and align the eyeballs so obviously i didn't do one eyeball and then just duplicate it and flip it around i painted both individually and they look somehow a little bit different so i've added a little bit of liquify to try and get the line through the center of each apex and each most important part i try to get them to line up here as you saw there i added a little bit of a liquify layer to the uh, painting as the eyeballs weren't quite in alignment so i just added a quick liquify with the face liquify tool this allows you to like do minute adjustments to each individual feature of a face which is really good in this situation because i can just make it align much quicker and much better i also noticed that the pupil and the irises are in different positions on the eye i then fixed that as she was looking kind of cockeyed and not looking in the same place. The pupil is on the wrong level as well. So I try to fix that at this point too. And then I just kind of carry on with my rendering. By rendering, I just mean uh, form shadows, form highlights. So this entails like where the brow meets the forehead and the cheekbone. So the little temple area, there will be like a, tran a curvular transition and it'll be in the shadow in this case. And on the other side of the face, it kind of is in shadow because the light's coming from the top right. Therefore, the underneath of the brow will be in shadow, but there will still be a little bounce, a little bit of bounce light off the eyelid. I decided to go back over my shadow shape and add a core shadow of like a mid, like kind of like a 65% value, mid saturation, reddish purplish color, as this adds like a bunch more form to this shape in this particular character. I also begin to fix the nose. There wasn't much indication of a nose bridge in my initial drawing. So this is me just kind of eyeballing it and making it up as I go along here. I'm trying to fix the problems that I've made through my drawing layer. So I'd suggest if you're in your own process, kind of just draw this stuff out originally and then start painting directly from your drawing. In my case, there was none of that. I'm kind of just painting from imagination here. Now I've added like my most darkest colors for the nostrils and the line of the lip of the mouth. This is like, the most uh, prominent area of ambient occlusion which is like the darkest area of contact shadow you'll notice that the headdress is not completely symmetrical i will fix this at a later date in the painting process as i kind of just work backwards a little bit i like to sculpt with the paintbrush rather than just leaving things as they are 
So I'm kind of refining the nose a little bit. You, it looks a little bit askew to one side and it lacks a bit of bridge. So I'm adding in a little bit more surface area to the bridge of the nose. And then I'm adding like a cast shadow or a form shadow or a core shadow to the bridge of the nose to make it look more cylindrical. And I think a most important, one of the most important parts of portrait painting is constantly flipping your canvas to see your errors. As if you don't do perfectly accurate preliminary sketch and you just work straight from your sketch, there's going to be some stuff off that you're going to have to edit at a later date. And it's important to make sure that you see these errors earlier on in the process rather than late. I appreciate you guys' time. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please go and follow me on all social medias at Gary Morgan Art. And if you want to see a part two to this video, please make sure to leave a comment below to let me know. Subscribe, like, and turn on your post notifications to be notified when I post my future content. Thanks for watching, guys.